What's up everybody, and before we get into this video, I'd just like to wish you all Happy Valentine's Day, and to those of you who are still single, Happy Video Game Night. So, last Friday, I went and saw a masterpiece of film, a real jaw dropper, a real showstopper. I went and saw Den of Thieves, and let me tell you, this movie, this movie is an abomination, and let me tell you why. Before seeing this movie, I'd only seen the trailer once, and that was months ago, so I didn't have that many expectations for it, outside of imagining it'd be a semi-coherent film, I mean, that's a, that's a normal expectation of any movie. Meaning I went into this without any idea of how bad it could possibly be. That? That was a major mistake. After finding out what the plot was after the fact, that was even worse. Oh god, no! Now I'm gonna go ahead and read the official description for the film, and then tell you why it's a bunch of complete fucking lies. Nick O'Brien is the hard-drinking leader of the Regulators, an elite unit of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Ray Merriman is the recently paroled leader of the Outlaws, a gang of ex-military men who use their expertise and tactical skills to evade the law. O'Brien, Merriman, and their crews soon find themselves on a direct collision course as the criminals hatch an elaborate plan for a seemingly impossible heist, the city's Federal Reserve Bank. Probably sounds like a good movie to you guys, right? Well, unfortunately, that's not at all what this movie is. At all. And while it's core, the description is somewhat accurate, somewhat is all it is. So first, Nick O'Brien, played by Gerard Butler, is constantly referred to as smelling of beer in the movie, and is shown drinking in the six or seven scenes that I assume were there to provide backstory. Second, he does lead an elite unit of the LA Sheriff's Department. However, the movie makes it seem like there's some sort of underground gang that doesn't follow the law. Do you know what this means? It means I am a member of a clique. It's kind of like being in a gang. We just shoot you. It's less paperwork. Now, Merriman's description is 100% accurate, which is actually worse because the only reason it's so spot on is because they never build upon his character. All we're ever given on Merriman is this. He's an ex-con, a vet, and he robs banks with his crew. The results in them never being caught. And even then, with the details as simple as the ones I just said, the movie does a piss poor job of explaining all this. I didn't even know they were all vets until I left the theater and read the plot online. And sure, you can blame me for not reading about the movie beforehand, but I personally feel a movie should be something everyone can understand without prior knowledge being needed unless it's a sequel. Not that any of this would have ever saved the film. This movie is the Hindenburg of films. The moment it started, nothing could save it. Not a thing. Anyway, let's get into the review of this film itself now. Spoilers, obviously. The opening for this movie wasn't bad at all. In fact, it was so good, and I use that word lightly, that it wasn't until about an hour in, I realized the opening was the only part of this film that I was ever going to find genuinely enjoyable. And the movie tries really hard to make you enjoy it, but no amount of trying and forced jokes without purpose will get you anywhere. Throughout the duration of the film, we switch between the perspective of Gerard Butler's character, Nick, and Pablo Schreiber's character, Ray Merriman. And this is actually where a lot of my frustration for this movie comes from. Den of Thieves wants its cake and to eat it too. It shows us what's going on with Merriman and his crew, which by the way, to the best of my recollection, are never referred to as the outlaws, despite all of the promotional material referring to them as such. While all of that is going on, it switches and shows Nick's unit making advancements on the case to try and hunt down Merriman because he stole an empty armored truck and they're angry and confused as to why he would want an armored truck without money. We solve all these cases. This is the crew. The movie tries to throw in some twists and reveals, but every single bit of the shock and surprise is lost because whenever something is intended to be a twist, nine times out of ten, it was shown five fucking minutes before. It completely ruins any of the shock from the reveal if the viewer has even a semi-coherent understanding of the plot, which I guarantee you is a hundred percent more than the damn director did. Den of Thieves is Christian Gudegast's directorial debut, and Christian, if you're watching this, listen carefully. I'm gonna say this the kindest way I possibly can. Never direct another film ever again. This movie is such a mess, and part of it is definitely because this film was in development over the course of 14 fucking years. It took Christian 14 years for him and his friend to write this movie and then for him to direct it, but regardless of that, Christian is still to blame for the bulk of it, since it was his job to make this coherent and look good. He failed both. I understand movies take time, and that's not my problem. My problem is that this man made such a horrible movie after spending 14 years working on it. So eventually it's revealed that the whole reason Merriman stole the armor truck was so that he can drive it into the Federal Reserve and steal all of the old dollar bills before they get shredded in the shredder. At any one time, there's anywhere between 500 and 800 billion dollars in there. 
They're separating newer fit currency from old unfit bills. And then by using the armored truck, they can sneak in by pretending they're a bank transfer. But before all of that can happen, Merriman and his crew decide to rob a bank, just a normal old bank, nothing special, just a run of the mill mom and pop bank. And they have Donnie tip Nick off because they're pissed or something and they want to play around with Nick. I don't know, as with many things in this film, the point of it isn't made clear, and it just comes off as confusing, and personally, to me, it seems more like they were too lazy to come up with an actual reason for how Nick and the regulators figure out where Merriman's crew is going. Not that it even really matters, because the reason Merriman is robbing the bank is so they can blow a hole in the vault floor and escape through the sewer pipes. Nick and his friends hear the explosion and assume the vault has been blown open, of course. None of that matters, though, since a few minutes prior, we see Merriman have the bank manager open the vault door, so we know it's not that. Followed by a prop cut to Nick talking to some other cops about the sewer pipes. So literally, that whole scene and the attempted suspense they try to build up doesn't even work. Because we as the audience already know what's happening. And then, the best part. They just stop caring about logic entirely. For the rest of the movie, Nick and the cops magically know where Merriman and his crew are. They never set off alarms, and they never give their location away. So unless I passed out while watching it, this movie is just so lazy. If there's any semblance of logic to the side, and just magics a high-speed chase out of nowhere. Which brings us to the end of the film. After getting stuck in traffic, both groups are forced into a shootout, which isn't anything impressive. Just a lot of empty cars getting shot and people dying, which is rather funny considering it. Many times during the film, the outlaws have made a point that they don't kill civilians. Matter of fact, that's the whole way that Nick finds out that it's Merriman in the first place. Because he realizes that Merriman didn't shoot any of the civilians that were nearby when they stole the armored truck. So he's like, hey, uh, fellas, fellas here, what, what, what type of convicts got out recently that had ex-military history because the only criminals that don't kill civilians those those have to be ex-military <laughs> i'm listening to the playback and it's just horrible i i don't know how this idea got through studio and that any of this made sense to the director as he was directing it so uh you know a round of applause to christian gudegas Anyway, the shootout continues with it all coming to a head when Nick shoots Merriman in the side. He runs and he jumps over a fence with Nick in hot pursuit. He fires the last few rounds of his gun to try and kill Nick. He fails to do so. He ducks behind a car and checks to reload his gun, only to realize he's out of ammo. So naturally, as Nick walks around the car Merriman had been hiding behind, he jumps at Nick and he gets killed. The end. Except no, because it has a twist ending. For whatever reason, they felt a twist ending was a good idea. It really wasn't. After returning to the road and speaking with the FBI and other cops, he goes to his truck where he'd previously caught Donnie, only to find him gone. Nick then goes to the bar where he first interrogated Donnie and asks around to see if anybody had seen him. No one has. And while looking around the bar and seeing some pictures with Donnie in them, Nick somehow realizes that he hired Merriman to do the job for him all along. Even though it makes a good 20 minutes of the film make absolutely no sense, but hey, fuck logic, am I right? So it all ends with Donnie running off with all the money from when they robbed the Federal Reserve, and he apparently shipped it to London in tires, where he is presumably scoping out another bank to rob, because apparently 30 million isn't enough. But wait, there's more! I left out a whole chunk of this film because it was irrelevant. It's also the worst part. I have no idea why, but Christian Gudegas decided that Nick has to piss his wife off. So naturally, when Nick arrives at 6 a.m. in the beginning of this movie, his wife is mad because she got a text from him saying, that was so hot last night. And since obviously she wasn't there, she leaves him and takes the kids with her. They never explain if this is the first time that he's pissed her off or if this is a recurring thing. Just all of a sudden, the wife is introduced, made angry, and leaves! And then, no more than 10 minutes later, the movie shows me getting approached by a lawyer with divorce papers. It just happened so quick, this, this relationship had to have been made by Elon Musk. It just, boom, gone. And naturally, a couple scenes later, he promptly signs the divorce papers in his wife's sister's house. Just lets himself in, sits himself down, pushes people around, asks for a pin, drinks a guy's glass of wine. It's the weirdest thing. I guess it's to imply that he's drunk, but it doesn't make much sense since he acts like this in almost every scene. It just seems like he's a gruff asshole, but I guess they're trying to, impl I don't know. This movie is just so dumb. The very last scene we see with any of his family, mind you, this is 50 minutes from the end of the movie, more or less. He says hi to his daughter at her school. The teacher, of course, never says anything. She just completely ignores it. And Nick says he'll see her again soon. We never see her again. And he doesn't even mention her again. There's never a triumphant scene where he hugs them or apologizes to his wife or talks about them to another cop and says that he's been divorced. Nothing, nothing like that ever happens. It is the most useless part of this entire damn movie. You could easily cut out most of this movie and to be honest, you probably have a better one. It's just so 
so bad that the entire film, including the goodish beginning, out of all of that, my favorite part of the entire thing was Cooper Andrews. And that's literally just because I've actually met him. I don't even know how to rate this movie. I feel like a one is too much and a zero feels too lazy, akin to how this movie felt. So I've decided to use a new ranking system where I just rank movies above or below one another. And since I've only done three reviews, this one included, this is Under Geostorm, which also stars Gerard Butler. I'm not looking forward to another Gerard Butler movie anytime soon. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And before I end the video, I just would like to say that after I finished recording all this, I found out that this garbage film has been given a sequel. A fucking sequel. God. Anyway, as I said, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, comment what you think of the video, or would like to see me do a video on, and subscribe to see more stuff like this in the future. As always, I'll see you in the next video.